If you're into computers at all, then you might know that NVIDIA's RTX 20 series launched just a few weeks ago. And I was really excited about this launch, not only because after two long years, we would finally be seeing a successor to the critically acclaimed 10 series, but also because at the time, I was building a new system to replace my old computer, which is over 10 years old at this point. And my eyes were on the 2080 Ti, the cream of the crop of the new generation of graphics cards because I was thinking that it would launch at around $700, the MSRP of the previous generations of 80 Ti cards, the 1080 Ti, 980 Ti, and 780 Ti, which all follow this pattern. And I had no reason to think that the 20 series would be any different. Boy was I wrong. Let me make something absolutely clear. I'm not rich enough to fork over $1,200 on a graphics card, let alone $2,000 for one on Amazon. Like, what? When I searched for the 2080 Ti on Newegg, I found a whole freaking computer that included the card for only $250 more. Not to mention that the RTX 2080, the step-down version of the 2080 Ti, is still more expensive than this thing at $800. Luckily for me though, in Hong Kong, a lot of people are selling their old GTX 10 series cards to upgrade to the new 20 series, which means, like me, you could also get a 1080 Ti for as low as $500, which is an amazing deal considering that in Hong Kong, the prices haven't fully recovered from the cryptocurrency craze. So this thing, brand new, will cost you $950. The deal is even sweeter when you consider that the GTX 1080 equivalent of my card, the Aorus Extreme Edition, is still more expensive at $700. So if you can get such amazing deals on secondhand GTX 10 series cards, why on earth would you spend up to 100% more money on 30% more performance? Well, why do people pay premium to gain access to new technology? because they want to be first. They want to be the early adopters. For the 1% that can pay a premium, they will just so they have access to the new technology, even if they don't have many opportunities to use it. But for all the hoopla that surrounds the 20 series cards, Nvidia really isn't exaggerating about how amazing this technology is. Remember that Star Wars demo they showed? That took four Tesla V100s to ray trace in real time at around 20 frames per second. Four $8,000 graphics cards for a grand total of 32,000 US dollars. And now that same ray tracing performance is found in a gaming card for a fraction of that price at $1,200. Sure, that's a hefty price to pay now for a gaming graphics card considering that the 1080 Ti is less than half that much and performs only about 30% worse. Remember that Nvidia can price these at however high they want because not even AMD's top range graphics card, the RX Vega 64, could match the 1080 Ti. It's roughly the performance of a 1080. So give time for competition like AMD to come up with their own implementations of RTX. Remember what happened to Intel CPUs? AMD came along and suddenly, oh wow, we're moving from 4 cores to 6 cores, because competition promotes technological development. But what if being an early adopter doesn't appeal to you? Why else would you buy one of these cards? Well, do you have one of those 4K 144Hz G-Sync HDR monitors that cost $2,000? Well, RTX 2080 Ti really is the only card that you can put in there to really enjoy all those frames. It can't max out at 144 FPS, that's really demanding, but it will easily do 4K 100 FPS at high detail for most of the latest and greatest titles. But what about ray tracing and DLSS? Why didn't I factor that in when I was talking about value? Let's talk about ray tracing first. According to all the available demos, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was getting between 30 and 70 FPS at 1080p on a 2080 Ti. And you're probably not buying a $1,200 graphics card to game at 1080p, let alone at 30fps, which is way too slow 
for fast-paced games like first-person shooters. I know that's just a demo, and the developers are still working out the kinks with a performance drop when ray tracing is enabled, but don't expect to play at 4K 60fps with high detail and ray tracing turned on once the full game comes out. Expect to drop the resolution or the detail settings to maintain a playable frame rate. Now what about DLSS? NVIDIA's AI-driven anti-aliasing. Surely NVIDIA's claims about RTX 2080 being twice the performance of a GTX 1080 is true, right? Well, yes and no. Yes, because it does help with frame rate, but that extra performance doesn't come out of nowhere. High Runbox has an excellent video on their initial investigations on DLSS that goes pretty in-depth into this, but in a nutshell, if you play at 4K with DLSS enabled, the game's textures aren't actually being rendered at 4K. Instead, they're rendered at 1440p, and then the AI upscales that to make it look like a 4K image. So what's left is an image that almost has the sharpness of native 4K. The performance and visual quality are roughly equivalent to that of 1800p with traditional anti-aliasing. So right in the middle between 4K and 1440p, so that is something to consider if you are buying one of these cards for the free performance. So where does that leave us then? What's the better choice for you, the GTX 10 series or the RTX 20 series? If you care more about value for money than anything else, buy the 10 series. Brand new, it offers better value for money than the 20 series does, and second hand, it's a no-brainer, as long as you're okay with putting up with the risks and hassles that come with buying from the second hand market. But if being an early adopter or having those fancy shadows and lights are more important to you, that's okay. Enjoy the new technologies that RTX brings, and I thank you for contributing to the mainstream adoption of RTX. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please make sure you also click the bell icon if you want to subscribe so you can be notified of any new uploads that I make. If you didn't like this video or you had any criticisms, please write to me either directly or down in the comments so I can continue improving my content for you guys. Thanks again.